Hello everyone. Welcome to this video introducing AMET. My name is Abhi Khobre. I'm from Qualcomm AI Research and I'm part of the team that focuses on model efficiency. So my team is researching different techniques to make machine learning models run efficiently on edge devices uh, using less compute, less memory while preserving battery life. I'm excited to introduce to you AMET. AMET stands for AI Model Efficiency Toolkit. Uh, it's a library that provides advanced model compression and model quantization techniques. These techniques have been proven to improve runtime performance of deep learning neural network models with lower compute and memory requirements without impacting task accuracy. AMET is designed to work with both TensorFlow and PyTorch models. I'm also excited to announce that AMET is now an open source project brought to you by the Qualcomm Innovation Center. And we intend to continue developing new features and adding more capabilities to this open source project on an ongoing basis. Our vision is to make it easier for everyone to run machine learning models on edge devices efficiently. I hope you'll find this library useful and I hope you will contribute back to the project. Uh, to help introduce AMET, we have created a set of video tutorials just like this one. This is the first of the few that we have created. And the remaining video tutorials uh, deep dive into individual features, while this one is, is more higher level introduction to AMET. I would like to thank Sangeeta Siddhagoda from my team who helped me put together content for these videos. So let's, let's dive in. Um, what you're looking at here is the AMET user guide. So this is documentation that is generated out of the, the source code. Uh, the, it's uh, described in restructured text files. And uh, so this introduces features and it talks about you know, how you can use those features and so on. It also includes links to the API documentation. And uh, this would have APIs for different uh, features within uh, AMET. For example, uh, you may have APIs for PyTorch model compression and uh, we will look at some of this, an example of this later in this video. So uh, let's talk about, you know, what, what is AMET, you know, again. So we, we discussed that it has compression and quantization techniques. And the way it is designed is it's supposed to uh, work well with TensorFlow and PyTorch models. It stays um, disjoint from uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow. So it works on those models, but at the same time, the users can use their existing training pipelines, use their existing evaluation pipelines. So it, um, you know, it sort of takes a model, let's say a PyTorch model, and it makes modifications to the model, but it results in an equivalent uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow model. So you can take that model and do uh, pretty much whatever you could do with the, the model you started with. Like for example, you can evaluate or you can fine tune with it. And then eventually you can take that model to a target. So the features in AMET, uh, they fall in these two categories, model compression and model quantization. And uh, in the model compression on the side of things, uh, there are two main uh, model compression pruning techniques that are supported today. Uh, one of them is called spatial SVD. We'll look at a quick code example on this later. So this, uh, technique is a tensor decomposition technique. It's uh, essentially you would take, let's say, a convolutional layer and you would split it into two smaller convolutional layers. Um, a, an alternate technique is called channel pruning. And what this does is it looks through the different layers and finds, tries to find channels or input channels of, let's say, convolutional layers, which are less important and uh, it would remove these uh, input channels and make further modifications to the graph uh, so as to you know, continue to work uh, while since you have made modifications to one of the layers. In, in addition to these two like sort of pruning techniques, we also have you know, what we would call automatic compression sele uh, ratio selection. So meaning like let's say you wanted to take a model and want to reduce it you know, down to 50% uh, of its original size. So 
so you while you you have this sort of target in your head you know i want a model that runs uh, that reduces let's say max by uh, 50% so uh, how do you go about doing that how do you distribute this compression across different layers which layers compress more which layers compress less so there are some techniques built in specifically a technique called greedy compression ratio selection and which will help us do this um, we will go into obviously details on the on these features in you know subsequent videos. Uh, on the model quantization side of things, there are again uh, a few techniques here. So you know at a at a base level there is support for quantization simulation. So which means you know take a model and what AMET would do is add ops to this model to simulate as if this model is running on quantized hardware so while you stay you know off target stay in you know in, in your uh, current environment on a desktop workstation where you're using pytorch tensorflow but you uh, being in that environment you would be able to you know obviously you you have a way to get your floating point accuracy but you'd also be able to get uh, accuracy if you ran this model on uh, quantized hardware, low precision integer hardware, for example. Uh, so, you know, with this simulation, you get this ability to get uh, analyze. You know, what would the, what would be the performance of such a model on target? But it also allows you to further train the model, which we call fine tuning, to improve this accuracy. So the model will learn uh, to counteract the effects of this quantization. Along with this quantization simulation, there are you know a couple other techniques, and these techniques actually don't require uh, fine tuning. Uh, so one of the techniques is called cross-layer equalization. So what we have observed is for certain models, especially the MobileNet family of models, uh, if you look at you know some of the layers in the model, you would see that there is a large variation in uh, ranges. Um, you know, amplitude ranges across different channels of that layer. And so what this technique does is it tries to equalize them it, uh, by folding some of the amplitude into the subsequent layer. And this helps improve quantization performance because, you know, you're generally quantizing layers as a whole. And so having, you know, a set of parameters that can work across channels is, is very beneficial. A uh, counterpart to that technique is called bias correction. So what this does is that we observe that quantization tends to introduce like a shift in the outputs of layers. Um, you know, you could also call this bias, not to be confused by the layer bias. And it, uh, you know, what this technique does is it measures this shift and it sort of corrects the shift using the layer bias. If, if, you know, I hope I didn't confuse you there. So we'll, we'll look into details of these uh, techniques more late in later videos um, so let us dive into a, a code example just to see a peek into you know how AMAT generally works so let me bring up my editor over here um, okay it's an empty screen at the moment I'm just setting up some some of my environment Okay, so uh, let's say we want to do use the spatial SVD uh, model compression technique. So let's start with some um, some imports. I cheated a bit and you know pasted these. So let's take a look at what these imports are. So some standard imports. You know here we are going to use PyTorch model. So we use uh, PyTorch, but also we would take um, you know standard ResNet 18 model from Torch Vision. Uh, these are pipelines for evaluation and training that I already have, so you know a user would all would generally have. And then from the AMET side, here we are um, uh, bringing in uh, this compress module, and this is going to this would have the APIs for us to uh, com uh, to compress. Uh, and there are some definitions and some parameters that we'll look at, and these would help us control how how we compress the model. So uh, let's start by getting um, a Torch Vision ResNet 18 model. Let's say we want to use a pre-trained model. And let's
let's say we put it on GPU to speed it up. So this model has been trained with um, ImageNet uh, dataset. So the shape of this would be like 224 by 224, uh, 3-bit color channels. Okay, so now we start by before we, you know, actually, you know, we could, we want to compress this particular model, but we want to set some parameters for it. So the first uh, set of parameters are for this automatic compression ratio selection. So in this example, we are going to use automatic compression ratio selection. So um, there is this technique, which we will go in detail later. It's called greedy. So the the only thing that we are going to specify right now is this target compression ratio. So for example, if I say I want target compression ratio to be 0.8, so that means that, you know, what I'm trying to say here is that I want the model to be compressed to 80% of its original size. Or in this case, like we would, we would choose whether we want to, uh, we want to focus on size or we want to focus on compute. Uh, like multiply and accumulates, right? So um, that's another parameter here. So let's, what we are going to do is we are going to do automatic selection. So I'm going to do some more, uh, let's set this up. Okay, so now, Here I will specify that I want to do a mode and the mode is automatic. We will also look at, um, uh, we will also look at um, manual mode later on in some other examples. So here we are saying that the mode is automa automatic mode and we want to use the parameters that we already uh, created. Okay, that's looking good so far. Okay, and so now let's talk about how we compress. So what this API is gonna do is it's gonna return to us a compressed model and it's also gonna return to us some statistics. So um, there are a bunch of uh, you know uh, parameters you pass to this call. So the first of them being the model itself. This is the model we wanna compress. And it's gonna, you know, essentially modify that model and return the modified model. Uh, we also uh, want to specify the input shape, which we had already set up over there. So to do this uh, automatic selection, it needs to do a bunch of evaluation. So you you want to pass it uh, like an a callback for an evaluation. So um, we will look at a little bit of detail on how this callback looks, but it is pretty much like a callback where you give it a model and will give you back a score. So here is an, uh, a callback that I already have and I could specify it, you know, how many iterations do we want to use for this evaluation? Let's say I say none, which means use all the iterations that you, for the data set for you, you have for evaluation data set. Um, and then we want to say compress scheme. So um, here we will uh, basically say that we want to do spatial SVD. So the same API can be used for different uh, compression techniques like channel pruning later on. Uh, so we are essentially saying please use spatial SVD. Uh, we talked about you know what we called cost metrics. So this is essentially you could either say I want to optimize memory or I want to optimize Mac, uh, multiply and accumulate. So let's say we want to optimize Mac at the moment. Um, and then we just simply pass in those parameters that we had already uh, specified. So uh, that is it. So we make this one call and lo and behold, we are going to get back statistics and a compressed model. Now this compressed model that is returned to us is is a, another PyTorch model. You input one PyTorch model and you get back a different PyTorch model. And the, obviously the model would be different. We would look at how it is different uh, in the, the model compression video. But you, you know, what I want to sort of emphasize is 
this is just like another PyTorch model. You can print it. Uh, you can also pretty print the stats to see what what this uh, particular uh, compression call did. Uh, you can uh, like do like a torch.save on this model, uh, on this compressed model. Uh, you can export it to Onyx. Um, pretty much anything that you can do uh, with a regular PyTorch model, you can do with this compressed model. So I think essentially what that helps helps you is like if you wanted to evaluate this model. It's simple like you can just call your own existing evaluation pipeline and you can basically say hey um, please evaluate this model and give me a score. So this is basically saying use all the possible data sets and use CUDA. I can also like train the model say you know train it for like let's say 15 epochs. So um, the reason you would want to train your model after compression is uh, generally compression depending on how much you compress a model will uh, will reduce will, will you know you'll see a dip in accuracy and obviously it's a trade-off so if the more you compress a model uh, the, the the sharper the dip in accuracy uh, of course certain models like you know let's say VGG models are you know very compressible and you can you know compress to a certain extent without losing accuracy uh, whereas others uh, you know, you would like ResNet's, ResNet 18 is, is a fairly efficient model. Uh, compress a little bit and you are gonna see a dip in accuracy. Uh, but not to worry, I think you can, what we have generally observed is if you train the model further, and obviously training the model involves choosing the right hyperparameters and so on. Uh, but if you train the model and you know, obviously you have to babysit a, uh, that a bit, uh, but you can recover back, you know, most of the accuracy, if not all the accuracy. So depending again, or generally for uh, spatial SVD and you know ResNet type models, we, you could uh, pretty much uh, compress it to 50% of the max and you know get back to within 1% of where you started from. Um, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to sort of show you this quick example. I hope you appreciate that it's fairly simple to invoke AMET uh, to compress your models. Uh, and you would also notice that um, we, you know, we sort of like specified certain parameters here, but we are going to go into more details on these parameters when we uh, look at the model compression vi uh, video itself. Um, so hopefully that was uh, useful for you. Um, and I hope um, you will check out the rest of the videos in this series. Uh, thank you for watching.